My name is Dr. Catherine Bollard and I am a Professor of Pediatrics and Immunology at Children's National in Washington, D.C. I'm Leslie Keene. I'm Associate Professor in the Department of Pediatrics at the University of Washington. My research is centered at the Seattle Children's Research Institute and then I'm also a full member at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. Dr. Bollard is the coordinating editor for the Blood Review series on emerging immunotherapies for hematologic diseases, and Dr. Keene is among the authors contributing to the series. Cell therapies really in the last five to ten years have really blossomed into this amazing field and this impact of immunotherapies is enormous, uh, not only in the field of hematology but you know even beyond cancer as a whole. We now are able to prevent relapse and prevent devastating infections in the majority of our patients who we transplant with an allogeneic stem cell transplant for a hematologic malignancy. So that's really, truly remarkable. If you're thinking about the topics that are most important to the ASH membership, cellular immunotherapy absolutely tops the list. I think you could ask 100 people and it would be almost uniformly in the top, let's say, three new innovations that, that we're thinking about for our patients. We really have tried to cover those big advances, not only in this current review series, but in the review series we put out in 2016 in blood. This current review series is a bit more broad. It's focused on benign hematologic disorders as well as malignant disorders. And so I think it will represent a very um, diverse set of diseases as well as um, cell therapeutics. This is such an important therapy sort of writ large in the field of medicine and touches on other specialties including neurology, including hematology, including immunology, asking about the basic immunology of how these T cells work. The first review is on chimeric antigen receptors with a particular focus of being beyond the CD19 CAR T cells. And I picked um, Stan Riddell from the Hutch uh, to author that review because he really is one of the founders or fathers of cell therapy. The work that Stan and his group is doing is really asking how can we make the success that we've had in the CD19 field really um, multiply and be able to facilitate treatments for other leukemias that don't necessarily have the CD19 marker but have other markers that might be able to be targeted by CAR T cells. One of the other reviews uh, is by Bruce Blazer and he is focused on uh, cell therapy for GVHD and aplastic anemia. Bruce is pioneering the use of regulatory T cells. Uh, he has really informed some really critical basic science contributions uh, to the field uh, with his murine models, which he is now translating to the clinic. The third review is on vaccines for hematologic cancers, and this is by David Abigan from Harvard. David's studies uh, in lymphoma have really uh, been really critical to show that these sorts of strategies are very potent, not just in the preclinical studies, but also in human translation. And so his review, I'm hoping, really will show how the field has evolved to now become a successful platform for immune therapy for cancer, in particular um, blood cancers. And then finally, we have a review article that focuses more on the toxicities side and the complexities of clinical translation. And I invited Leslie Keen to do this review because she has really uh, been a terrific physician scientist who, she's a bone marrow transplanter, but has really used the non-human primate model to answer many of the questions that are just impossible to answer in the man or the mouse. I've been very interested in the new burgeoning field of CAR T cell therapy and have done a bit of work now looking at one of the major toxicities of that therapy, which is neurotoxicity. And so we've built the first large animal model of neurotoxicity, and that's giving us insights into what the biomarkers, et cetera, are um, that 
correlate with and potentially cause neurotoxicity in the patients receiving CAR T-cell therapy and how that interplays with what we know about bone marrow transplant and the same cells, the T-cells, that are used to produce uh, remission in CAR T-cell therapy are also sort of the bad actors sometimes in, in bone marrow transplant can cause GBHD. So there's a lot of crosstalk between those questions and my work is now asking questions in both those arenas. Her article will really be helpful not only for basic scientists and people that are working more preclinically, but also for the clinicians who are treating these patients and are managing the toxicities of these therapies. We really have to be armed with a lot of different potential preventative and, and treatment mechanisms. The work that I've done as well as other people in the field have done have identified these possible mechanisms and so we're at this very important phase that we now have hypotheses that we can test both in the lab and also some are ready for testing in patients. You know, there are some people that say there's no one that can't have a transplant anymore and that just really speaks to how transplant has evolved and how we're now able to use transplant as sort of the platform from many of the other cell therapies that I've been talking about and that we're focused on in this review series. Please find this review series and other blood content on bloodjournal.org. This presentation is copyrighted by the American Society of Hematology.